bats are oftentimes very, very difficult to capture. Uh, they live, they're where they spend the day, those are called day roost sites, and oftentimes they're high in trees or deep in foliage or in caves or crevices in rocks, and it's often very difficult to find the day roost sites. So on Madagascar and throughout much of the old world, there's a group of bats that are called fruit bats, and these are very large animals. Some get to basically a uh, half a pound or so. And on Madagascar, there's one species that's uh, very large and used to be very common, and it's widely consumed for food. So a few years ago, when I needed some specimens for an anatomical study, uh, rather than going to the forest and trying to collect these things and capture them, it was just easier to go to the corner market. And we have a specimen downstairs that's uh, nicely prepared, and you can still smell the musky aspects of the fur. It was a big male. And on the label, it's marked, bought in the frozen food section of uh, Antananarivo supermarket. Well, the thing that's rather unfortunate is that this heavy exploitation is pushing a protected species. And these things are becoming notably rare, largely because of human exploitation. The challenge is, is to allow people to change the economic basis of the way they live, where they don't have to rely upon those forest resources in a, in a truly a subsistence manner. And by doing so, they think of the forest in a different uh, fashion and conservation, real conservation, can unfold.